Refrigeration and air conditioning part one. Here we'll discuss about uh, basic theories and uh, thermodynamic principles behind refrigeration. As a start, let's move to uh, basic difference between refrigeration and AC and ventilation. Okay, first of all, refrigeration is just removal of heat from one space or substance. And while the air conditioning is it's not only uh, related to cooling down, sometimes it may add heating up. So, refrigeration actually part of air conditioning, we can say. Air conditioning mainly, you make the environment comfortable. This may include heating or cooling, especially controlling humidity and purification of the air. So, air conditioning is a combination of refrigeration, ventilation, both. The finally, what is ventilation is, it is just pulling out air from one space to the other space, just to replace the air. Right, next, if we consider basic cycle of uh, refrigeration, we can see a compressor, which compress the refrigerant gas, and then it passes through a condenser where the heat from the gas is extracted then this uh, cool down gas it will become liquid this liquid is passed to expansion valve where the high pressure of this liquid will reduce to a low pressure value then the refrigerant is almost uh, at a position which is uh, tends to evaporate. So, this liquid will enter the evaporator where it starts evaporating. For evaporating, that heat is absorbing from the surrounding and refrigeration takes that heat along with it and it will convert to a gas. From the compressor, hot gas comes after the condenser, it is high pressure liquid. From after the expansion valve, it is uh, low pressure liquid. And in the evaporator, this liquid will become a superheated gas. This is the basic refrigeration cycle. And we can say, just to analyze thermodynamic properties, the refrigeration, the refrigerant, we can consider it as water because most of the refrigerants and water behaves almost similar except their uh, temperature of operating and the pressure these things but mainly uh, for easy understanding of this thermodynamics we'll discuss the uh, water and uh, steam and the uh, ice relationship right okay this is the curve phase change curve if you consider ice which is below zero degree let's say that you are going to heat it up and uh, you can monitor the water temperature by uh, in, uh, using a thermometer thermometer right and what happens let's say now this eyes are below zero degree so as a, as uh, you are adding heat what happens the temperature of this thermometer will increase up to zero degree Thereafter, all of a sudden, that you will notice, even though that you keep continue adding heat, there won't be any increment in, on the thermometer. That means the adding up of heat is uh, contained in the uh, eyes of water and it used to some other purpose. It will not indicate as its surface temperature increment. So, you cannot sense that heat. This region, you can say it is sensible heat because that you can feel that temperature increment. This phase, we can say it is latent heat because there won't be any apparent increment of the temperature. Instead, this heat is absorbed to uh, change the phase from solid or the uh, ice to liquid. Once all the ice become liquid, then again it starts to increase the or shows the value uh, on this thermometer. Again, that part we can say it is sensible heat because we can feel it. Again, at 100 degrees Celsius, as the water starts to boil, again, it will stop the increment of this 
temperature of the water and that phase it will continue until all the water molecules liquid molecules become steam during this phase there won't be any uh, temperature rise that you can feel so it is we call latent heat because that you cannot feel and thereafter once all the liquid molecules vapor out we can call it as superheated steam and this is what is and latent heat is that energy absorbed or released by a substance during change in its physical state and sensible heat when an object is heated its temperature rises as heat is added and we can say there are two phases uh, this is a uh, latent heat of fusion this is latent heat of evaporation and at this 100 degrees celsius for the water we can say it is the boiling temperature or else official term is saturation temperature then there is another thing that we have discussed this is temperature against the entropy curve and the curve uh, like of this shape and it has maximum temperature point we call critical temperature above the critical temperature no matter how much pressure you applied on a gas or a steam it will never become liquid so in this curve we call it saturated liquid line left side of this uh, line we can Called, we can say it's subcooled liquid. There won't be any gas or steam molecule. The right hand side of this curve, we can say it is superheated range. So there won't be any uh, liquid molecules present in this region. The area covered by the graph that we can say this area and it is wet steam or wet gas. It contains liquid molecule as well as the gas molecule. And the percentage or the portion to liquid molecules to gas molecules is depend on where that state is uh, the process is, the states of the process. Let's say if it is closer to the liquid the saturation liquid line, then most of the uh, portion is uh, liquid molecules. And when it is close, come closer to the vapor saturated vapor or the saturated vapor line then most of the molecules are uh, gas molecules. So to indicate the percentage, how much gas molecules to the liquid molecules, there is a thing called dryness fraction. If the dryness fraction is one, then it is, we call it is dry steam. There won't be any liquid molecules. If the dryness fraction is less than one, that means it's, it is having a saturated uh, uh, wet steam, which means that it has molecules, liquid molecules. Mm, again, this is the typical uh, critical temperature. This is uh, pressure against volume PV diagram. You can see clearly uh, on the left hand, uh, right hand side of this uh, point, doesn't matter how much pressure that you apply, that it will never become liquid. It will remain in, on it gas states. Right? This is quite important uh, temperature. So the critical temperature of a substance is the temperature at and above which vapor of the substance cannot li liquidify, no matter how much pressure is applied. Right. Then the basic thermodynamic process. Here I will use four processes. First one is isobaric, which means constant pressure. The next one isochoric, which means that volume is constant. At the lid close, there is no chance to expand the gas so its volume will remain constant but pressure can be varied in adiabatic process which means that heat in transit so we we can say uh, the energy in transit we call it heat there is no heat in transfer takes place so there is no energy crossing the thermodynamics boundary we call it adiabatic process in isothermal process the temperature is remain constant constant the temperature remains constant so there won't be any uh, noticeable increase in temperature even though that you add the heat then what is enthalpy and entropy enthalpy means that is the total uh, energy contained in a system or a substance which means there will be an energy we call uh, internal energy that is used for internal molecule uh, movement and this kinetic energy and all, all these things plus there will be work done 
that substance has some capability to do some work done. We call it pressure into volume or PV, right? So collective together, this internal energy plus the work done, we call it enthalpy, right? And as another term, entropy. What is entropy? Entropy means uh, it is just an indication the level of degree of disorderness of the substance. Let's say for ice, if it is having high entropy, that means it's already disordered into liquid and further to gas. So how much percentage that it disordered from its original uh, uh, the nature, we can call it as entropy. As I explained you before, that is uh, ice and when it becomes liquid and the gas entropy increases. The next diagram, it shows the TH diagram, temperature was enthalpy. Again, here the critical point, left of that we call subcooled water. So the water, let's say as you he adding up heated, the heat, the subcooled water will reach the saturation liquid line. Then it process through the wet uh, steam or wet gas zone and then it will reach its dry uh, steam region we call superheated steam or saturated steam uh, dry saturated steam thereafter it will reach the superheated steam this is what we have discussed earlier that is ts diagram both of these units are uh, kilo, joules per kilogram and the entropy temperature against the entropy curve uh, the shape is somewhat similar to this and uh, how that process is uh, happened represented by this O to Z curve. And we can say for a single component, the bubble point, boiling point and the dew point are the same. Let's say in case of this 100 degrees Celsius, that is the temperature where that the evaporation takes place as well as the dew or condensation takes place. So we can say the bubble or the dew point uh, is the boiling point. Yeah. So with this theories, we'll go to a basic refrigeration cycle next, and I will explain you uh, with the uh, vapor compression cycle, and thereafter we'll move to the practical uh, river application. See you on next video. Thank you.